We look at Ethereum on the daily term time frame. It's very close to completing what could be an inverted cup and handle. Almost that of a double top, but the neckline to the previous resistance at 822, half the price of the resistance at the end start of this year. So therefore, I got a very, very small buy order and at 375. The buy order below that, that's in at around 200, barely over it. So I guess a match of the lows from September of 2017. But I say to myself, is that a good number? Do I reduce it? For if Bitcoin has a decent fall, should I maybe consider this low here? Well, if in doubt, you can always try to calculate Fibonacci retracement. I'm going to not count this low. And how wild a market can be going from 40 cents up to about, we'll say, 1400 or exactly 1424. Let's do some Fibonacci. And within these levels, we just 218 is the 23.6% down move. That's how wild these moves have been. And when I look at it further, it's the same position as Bitcoin, really. I mean, that would lose about half its value. In fact, Bitcoin's now below 6,000. So technically, that would actually be still a larger loss. So my buy order at uh, 200 is going to stand pat. Moving on to Bitcoin and at 5,800 and change. And of course, everything you do within your own risk own reward. I'd like to welcome you. And I did my welcome a little later after the f little intro on Ethereum. But this down move continues to come into play. This thing has clearly been falling from the key level of 6,000, clearly below any of the key support levels. On the single hour chart, we can see the next leg lower. Now back to this previous uh, support level. So until I see otherwise, I still see this on route to 3,000. Maybe you can say if you're on a subway, next station stop. Well, maybe there's a few stops along the way, but the ultimate destination, I think, might be three. Looking at this via the weekly chart, this low in 2015 is 152.40. I'm going to round it to 150. And this high, 1966, we'll round that to 20,000 and calculate more Fibonacci. Key numbers 6,303 representing the 236. There's that 3,000 number. 61.8 means 38.2% down. That's in a 3,085, and I, they usually appear sex. So I'm gonna, I've been saying the random 3,000 for what seems like the last two years, but really the last four or so months. And the 38.2% up move is equivalency to a 61.8. If there's ever a spot where I think it might pierce exactly at or above it, it would this be this one. 4,000 would also be psychological, but that's interesting that I say a 61.8% move at 1,000. Because to me, I see a situation like this, and this line of 67, well, 63 is just a barely below such. It's just that happens to be where this support was big on the second hit lower. But the 6,300 was definitely Fibonacci support on the original side. This 18 average has ha had the move a situation happen here in which it came up to the 18 highs, has left it, and has clearly continued its way lower for several periods, this being number four since the decline, or about a month.
But will 3,000 be that level? For 1,000, technically, is what it needs to hold and stay above for the rally that started back here not to fail. If I see that level fail at 1,000, this is why I would think a Pierce, like if it, I guess I suppose it could hit 850. But if it fails this Fibonacci test, if it even gets there, that's when I'd be saying that the uh, Chris Dwayne people and the Peter Schiff people, well, they were right. And of course, if that doesn't happen, well, they'll be wrong. But I know people are not going to be looking at log scale too much. They'll see a chart looking like this. And they'll see that everything pretty much is, is I mean, it's over when they, because nothing happened here for a while. And of course, I like the logarithmic scale, which shows you uh, how each candle moves from each other. So upon this, I can look at the monthly chart and see that the volatility from 2011 up to the first big high in 2013 has significantly reduced since then. But still, uh, hanging in there. for Because it's been since, really, from this moment on, from May the 1st, the volatility has been higher than it was from this period, really down to... Uh, February of 2015. So volatility got really small in here because you had a lot of these bigger size moves that occurred beforehand. And let's look at coin market cap. And as we can see that uh, everything's going to be in the red. So with the crypto day mornings, whenever the markets move wild, either up or down, there's a decent chance the videos might be a little bit later. The reason for such is I put the video out when all the morning activities, first thing in the morning activities are done. And part of that is making the trades. And if I get a whole bunch of orders come in, well then I'm going to have to manage each one. Now this one here, I've never even heard of this, but I quickly looked at this about 15 minutes ago up 23.95%. When we look at the chart, it's been going on since the April Fool's rally. And it hasn't really sold off too much. It's done relatively well. Now granted, it came from the start. Was a thousand Satoshi in the early stages, got up to 15,000, and then now is in at 7600 where is this traded on and I've already looked at this so I know the answer mainly bit thumb some smaller ones at the very bottom you got coin exchange there was a very small arbitrage opportunity available 15 minutes ago the price we can see is mainly 8000 and a little above it in most places. I'm going to ignore this KRW exchange, but as far as anything like US dollars and main cryptocurrencies, I will not. 8,000, 8,000, 78. I'm not even going to count this small exchange. So it's the big, big exchanges is going for 8,000, as we can see with these OKX and Bit4X not far behind. Now on Coin Exchange, this is the site where you can get a lot of good arbitrage opportunities, although it takes a lot of work to do so. Right now, you can buy 54 of them for 82.50. Now that's not much. That's one half, or excuse me, 50% of 1% of a Bitcoin. So that's like 25 30 bucks worth not much at all so that's one thing to keep of note but look at these orders in here this is sell orders 82.50.54 even less at 93.44 126 for 1.1 percent of a bitcoin at 93 so nothing too too big 2.1 percent at 12,000 the difference is pretty big so if you have your sell orders in here 
You stick one in at about 11.5 and you can stick some, and then there's a bunch in here. But you can oftentimes, you can see these markets on these smaller exchanges in which we'll have the big, big uh, moves where they go much lower or much higher. Buy orders you can see here, 7,500. And look at the 75. I mean, this is a case where one person's overbidding. And for me, if I was to want to bid at the best rate, and I'm assuming that 7510 wasn't in the business or the game, I'm looking at 2.58. I mean, I'll just match you. That's like nothing of a bid as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's only uh, like 19,000 Satoshi or something. That's not uh, much at all. So I would just match it. But if somebody had a bigger size bid, then maybe I would uh, want to. Now myself, if I wanted to make a small buy order, then I'd go 7511. But if I was going to buy like two, four, five, wanted to buy like three, four, five hundred, I would just match the 7510. That would be the way I would do it. But of course, like always, everything is amongst your own risk and your own reward. Any other decent movers? Anything in the 20% down range? 15, which is Cortex. I haven't heard of that one before. Okay, let's take a look at this. Where's, first, where's it traded? Okay, Huobi. Okay, X, Coin Tiger. The only account I have of the bunch is Huobi, and it's not active right now. I, I wasn't a fan with... Uh, there was a lot of login problems. I had to use different browsers. Wasn't a fan of that at all. And then I remember even JSNIP4 mentioning there was login problems on the same day. I'm like, geez, not... So I, I, I got out of Theta at the time just for that very reason. Here's a bunch of Fibonacci's. Point high to point low hits a 38.2%. Then it's now went down 38.2%. I can tell by looking at it. This is a pierce above 38.2%. This is about a 44% retracement, I would think. And then on the way down, we're looking at about 30, 36, close to 38%. And this is just my eyesight trying to figure out what percentage of the way are we from here to here. That's really what Fibonacci is. So from high to low, if, you got, if you're very good with the ruler, you could, you'd be just as good as calculating Fibonacci as a mathematical calculator, whether they have one or not. But I'm not going to look at anything more on Cortex. But interesting, interesting chart. How long has it been around, just out of curiosity, since the, uh, well after the April Fool's rally? Okay. Next, anything else of note? 15% for, I've never even heard of this one either. I kind uh, what's the ticker symbol on it? A-I-O-N? Never heard of it. Where do we have this on? Binance. I can trade there. I was on the Qui, same thing, inactive. Now, not different problems with them, not really. They have some interesting expensive withdrawal fees for some coins. And they work fine. It's just a small exchange, and I have no real need to trade with them right now. Let's take a look at the... What's the volume again? Two million? Ah, yeah, playable. Okay, what do we got here as a low? Well, bit below the seven number. Ah, we'll just do, uh, looks like 6,800 will work. And then the 75. So we'll do 75,068. Okay, the key numbers are 30 and 17. Well, it's kind of a buy now in a way. It's already pierced below it. But what's this number here, 26? 76.4 is in at 
Oh, 29 right here. So that, that one hit well. I'm tempted. I really am tempted. Because I don't want to buy too, too much, but... At least not until the 3,000 much, much lower Bitcoin prices. But I'm going to keep that one on the radar. What else can we find here? Crypto. Another one I've never heard of. Crypto next. I mean, this has got to be something... How long is, first of all, how long has this been in business for? See, this one goes back to IN from like last year. So when a situation like this occurs, I look at this as usually a decent spot in the, if it's not a shit coin and it's not a fraud coin and all that kind of stuff, even if it heads lower to me, this is, generally speaking, where I like to get in and acquire a, a base position. And if it goes lower, just keep on adding like I do with all the other markets in which I end up uh, playing. Cortex, I think I, which one am I looking for? I think Cortex I haven't loaded yet. Or now I have Crypto Next, that's the one. I thought that was I was looking for a different one. So this one I just clicked on, uh, $3 uh, down 13%. Where is this traded on? Um, hit BTC, uh, got an account there I don't trade though. What's this crypto next site all about? Looks like it's their own base coin. Sort of like the Binance coin maybe? Take a look at their site. The world's first blockchain acquiring easily convertible cryptocurrency payment system, cryptocurrency exchange, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the uh, CNX wallet. The world rating 64th place. At least, well, they got some statistics. What's important for me is what the, well, there's a lot of things that are important, but the first thing I want to look at is what the actual exchange looks like. So we got Explorer. I don't want to download an ex exchange. I really don't want to download anything. I mean, where do I find the exchange? See, if I go to a website like this, this is like an automatic turnoff and I don't want anything to do with them. So what's next? I want to see the exchange like pretty quickly. 16% for KuCoin. That's, an, that's another one of uh, exchange coins. 11% for Nebulous. 12% for Bitcoin Diamond. But none of these are down that that big as of yet. I mean the big ones are only getting single digit uh, moves at this stage. If I do a refresh because this was loaded about a half an hour ago. And eh, nothing much different. And I'm going to finish this video off by going over Scenario with AMP. I think it is just AMP anyway. And I got a whole bunch of uh, key lines here. Fibonacci. This is interesting because we are having uh, another key test here. This is at the uh, 526 handle that it bottomed from. And it's coming down to the 1563 mark, where when it came there at the end of 2017, it was an area for support. My rule of thumb is, if there was a key level from before, and it had a very good rally thereafter, which obviously was the case here, and it eventually thereafter comes back to it that you oftentimes will at least get a bear market rally. And in such, first place I'm looking at, even on a conservative level, is this previous level of resistance. And at 27 to 30. So there's about a 2x move from, well, buy order would be like 1,501, 1,502. 
because I got the line at 1563 and I expect it to pierce below. You can even try to go for 1400 as well because I mean it could pierce decently extra when it reaches these levels. Of course that was the case in here, piercing extra on this line. When it came down to this Fibonacci support here at 46, it actually came down to 41, 42. It didn't have that much of a rally, but 46 to 55 was there for some of it. Now, here's the interesting part, though. If you either don't get support or you get the support like you did here on the uh, Fibonacci this part. I mean, it, it worked as Fibonacci. It stopped it from going down. That's the key thing. Stopping it from going down doesn't always necessarily mean it's going to go up. So that's one of the risks associated as well in trying to do something. But if it breaks down below this level, I find it very, very interesting because there's no lines here, but the support that was established at the end of 2016, roughly at around the 3,080 mark, the support here at the end of 2017 and all of this year pretty much is in that same general area. It has went a little bit below it. So the way I look at it for cycles, and this is the scary part about markets, is you have move A, which goes up to this low, then again to the high of the Fibonacci, back to the low, that if you go from high, that means that you could almost say, well, this is test number three of this area. So if you're looking for a rebuy back, your rebuy back was back in 2017 in August at about 3,700. You had to take this decline. Another reason why I like, like talking about or I bring, bringing this chart up because if you go back and think, okay, you had the rally from here and the good gain. And this gain that I talked about that was very good looks a lot lighter. Now Fibonacci on here is uh, not quite the most accurate, but even still, it had its move. And this could tell me here that it's a very risky situation. It could have a serious, serious fall, even in the area of like... Uh, even 100 Satoshi are pretty much down to nothing if this level ends up failing. So a lot of risk associated with it. And that's the general overall risk when playing cryptos and most certainly the buy low, sell high game that I've talked about. But when you look at the moves that can occur if you are patient enough, there are a lot of profitability situations. I mean, this pure sell was just so amazing. I'm not going to go back in time and do that. I've done a few more of those recently. I'm done with that for a while. But if there's one you want to try and just see how you would do, like buying and selling this, it would work out very well. But you got to look at the psychology here. Back when this thing in 2016 in October was at like 28,000 Satoshi, it's falling to like 36. So you're losing eight times your value. If you look at how you would have been looking back then, it would have looked terrible. But obviously, it was a tremendous buying opportunity. So those who held through with all of this would end up being winners, especially when you look at your portfolio. You look at as it was writing, you go up here like, oh my goodness, I'm worth all this. Oh, yeah, yeah, awesome. And then, oh, how's your portfolio doing today when you're down here? Um, uh, please, I don't want to talk to you right now. Or let's talk to about a different subject. Uh, or everything's in order is what you should be saying because your orders are ready to go and then sell orders come in and you got to be doing much better on a portfolio level when the market reached this fib top of 25 change than you were when it was 40 because of all the trades you would have had along the way and as long as the markets have all of these up and down choppy movements then that's all fine with me I'd like to thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.